there are many women today who are out earning men, female doctors, lawyers, etc. Why is a male breadwinner considered to be normal for a man, while a female breadwinner is often considered to be dating down for a woman? Um, I think a lot of times we refer to back in the days when men were considered the breadwinners. They were the men. They were the people that brought home the, home the money while the women stayed home. So now that generations have changed and things have changed, you know, now women are getting on their shit. Like, it's not just rely on a man anymore. It's do for your own and he's going to do for himself. And you guys can either do that shit together or, you know, one person could be the breadwinner. I guess it all depends on what you agree on in your relationship. But I really do think that it has to do with the change over time. Why is it that a rich man would sooner change a broke woman's life, but a rich woman is less likely to give a broke man a chance? Because men like to have the power to uplift and feel like they're doing, I guess, like justice to the woman versus a woman is like, I don't need to, I guess. You know what I'm trying to say? Kind of. I wouldn't necessarily agree with the second part of that question because I honestly think it's more of a societal stigma where society just kind of like says that women have a problem being with a man of a certain financial, you know, status. I, I don't necessarily think that that's what we as women think right off the bat, but. A rich man see the future in a, in a woman and we could build them up. But a woman already feels when they got money that they already built up and they wouldn't want to build us up. You feel me? They feel like they're better than us when they have money. You're we're broke, we're all this when they got money, but when it's the other way around, they want us to pay for their bills and help them financially be stable and everything, you know? I think we all have standards, but women are always told all their life, don't settle, don't settle, don't settle. So when it comes to a man that is making less money than you or you're you're the breadwinner whatever the case may be you feel like you're settling you're settling for less you're settling for like you, you feel like you deserve more whereas a man takes leadership and accountability and can be that leader in that relationship that a woman cannot be okay what is hypergamy oh i don't know that's a big word okay <laughs> hypergamy essentially means marrying up to a person of higher status which gender is more likely to practice hypergamy the woman I'll be honest okay why is that I would say I can only speak for myself and it's like knowing that if I make if I'm doing so well in life like yeah I would want to either marry equal or up like why would I downgrade myself if I know again what I'm capable of or what I'm earning okay so if women historically married up wouldn't that mean that men historically married down I mean, so who's really settling for who? But it's, in society, women have always been the prize. So it's the woman trying to earn the woman's attention. I mean, the man trying to earn the woman's attention or, you know, win her over. So at the end of the day, we're the catch. So it's the man trying to get us. So no, he's not marrying down, even if per se, I don't make as much as he does because, again, he's happy to have me on his arm. Which gender is more likely to practice hypergamy? Men. Females. Females? Why do you say men? Why do you say females? It's just naturally in them to do that. No, females marry higher up okay. all the time. Okay. They marry for money. Okay, so they're not going to mess with a guy that's broke. I mean, if you're a guy that's broke and you have nothing to offer a woman, right, why would a woman mess with you? Most women will not. Okay, so, you know, you, you got to have something going for you as a guy. A good, good personality, good looks, none of that means nothing. Most women want uh, stability as in money and, you know, as a lifestyle. Like when you talk about the big dream, the big dream is like, oh, I want to live in maybe a big house and marry, a, marry into a good life and stuff like that. But I think where we came from in Denmark is quite equal as it is right now. Definitely. definitely. It depends how you, how good your education is. And yeah. in our case, our education would be just like the male, the male, yeah. the man. Definitely. But that's like the American dream. Okay. If women historically married up, 
Wouldn't that mean that men historically married down? Yes. <laughs> yes. I mean, so the way you put it together, yes. Yeah. So who's really settling for who? I think as soon as you get married, the man settles for the women. The man is always settling. In every situation, the man always has to settle at a certain point because there's no woman that you're going to meet that's going to check every single box. Eventually, you're going to have to settle. Okay. Is hypergamy for women ultimately about security and survival? I can't say that. I, I have to disagree because a lot of women, like about those two, those two definitely, but financially that's a big thing. Isn't that a byproduct of evolution? I mean, didn't women want to secure the best genes for their offspring? Isn't that a primal instinct? Yeah. So then wouldn't it be about security and survival? Yeah. I, I have to agree then, yeah. Is hypergamy for women ultimately about security and survival? I think yes. It could be. Is Guys, that what are a, we doing? <laughs> is, that, is that a byproduct of evolution? Well, yes, women look for attractive traits in their male to secure them and their offspring. That's like I think a cool thing. Men marry down because the girl's good looking, and women marry up for because security. for like money and stuff. Okay. And they have to be good looking. <laughs> but you know what? All men end up ugly anyway, so who even really cares? I actually, I'm not going to include myself in this, but a lot of women are just looking for the richest man. That's the thing. They just want to find the one with the most money. Whereas some are looking for some that will accept them. It's different for everyone, but majority are looking for the one with the most so money. So do you think that women are looking for sugar daddies and men are looking for trophy wives? Oh, shit. Uh, I got to agree with you on that one. D guys, don't, don't fight me. Does hypergamy mean that women will always continue to choose the best option and never settle? Mm, no, because a lot of women settle. Right, but do they want to settle? No. So they would want to choose the best option, right? Yes. Yeah, I mean, women are picky as is, so it's like they're going to always choose the best option for who they want and who they want to be with because they're not going to settle for less. They're going to settle for the top dog. Some women are so set on not settling that they never find that perfect person. And it's just, they just keep looking, keep looking, and they're going to look until they find no one because no one is going to check all those boxes. Okay, is hypergamy the equivalent of men never satisfied with only one chick? I mean, a man of high status is always going to have multiple options. Like, that just comes with the man who has money like that or even has that type of quality of life. Is hypergamy the equivalent of men never satisfied with only one woman? Men is never satisfied. I don't even think it's about women. I think it's about men are just never satisfied, period. Money, They're not satisfied women, with career. themselves. Men is not satisfied with Or is it men always wanting the girl with the best looks? Yeah, they definitely want a pretty girl. Okay, but I'm just saying if women are always looking for the best option, wouldn't a man always be looking for the best option as well? Yes. Okay, so is that kind of like a similar, comparable thing, you know? Yeah, it is. Okay. What is the difference between a hypergamous woman and a gold digger? I feel like a hypergamous woman is looking for someone to do what we were used to back in the day. Lead, um, be the breadwinner of the family, someone who is just the provider. A gold digger is someone who just wants, 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 wants. If you're in a high pregnant relationship, the woman is still providing, the woman is still doing, the man is doing a lot more. Gold digger is just gonna take, 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 never give, ever. Okay, a gold digger is just looking straight for money. Like, they don't really care about what the guy looks like, what he has to offer, they just want the money. Uh, well, actually they do care about what he has to offer. They, if it's money and luxury or any type of things that they can get from him, then yeah, they'll do it. But uh, you said high pregnant? Yeah. Okay, so with that, um, if you, or if they uh, go for that, they kind of want to find love in the sense of, you know, quality of life that they have. Do you find it hypocritical when parents advise their sons to avoid gold diggers while also advising their daughters to find a man who will take care of them? Um, a little bit. I mean, obviously a okay. woman. So isn't hypergamy encouraged in women? I feel like in this day and age with social media and everything, it is, yeah. Of course, we're going to want to lead our children to the right direction. And if we're raising a son, we're going to raise them to try to find a woman that 
can balance out their lives. Whereas our daughters, we can't just, me personally, I would never let my daughter slack. But also a man who is able to provide is a man who I believe is able to lead a family and raise a family and make things what they should be. People raise different. Some people might raise their kids like that, but at the end of the day, we all want our children to have the best in life. And it's better when they have a spouse that they parent approve of. What is the difference between a hypergamous woman and a gold digger? Because again, if we're not just talking about finances, you know, uh, oftentimes people marry for you know love and, and stuff like that. So if if there's other factors that are associated with that, then I would say that differentiates her from being a gold digger. Do you think unconditional love is possible in a romantic relationship, or are people only as loyal as their options? I th I, I think unconditional love is uh, definitely a thing if both partners are 100% invested. I'm I'm almost positive that it will work. Um, I mean, curiosity will always be a thing no matter what. That's not that's something you cannot stop. But if you don't act on it, then yes. What are your thoughts on the following statement? A man's loyalty is tested when he has everything, while a woman's loyalty is tested when her man has nothing. I feel like that is true. I feel like when a man is down and out, that's a woman's escape goat to get out the relationship and out the system. And I feel like when a man is up and has everything, power, money, women, that's when you know if he really loves you and he's loyal if he sticks by your side and holds you down, 10 times down, always. I agree with that 110%. That is, that's so then, so valid. Then, so wouldn't that mean that people are only as loyal as, as their options? Oh, you're stressing me out. Yes. Why are you doing this to me? Oh my God, but you're telling me things that I never really thought about. I'm not telling you what you want to hear, I'm telling you what you need to hear. My boyfriend just broke up with me. This is everything I need to hear. Really, will you go out with me? Yeah. <laughs> Have you noticed the things men do to compete for women? Yes, very much so. What do they do? Uh, one up each other, uh, competitive talking, uh, and everything that men do, of course. What are the things women do to compete for men? Market themselves, uh, outslut each other, if you will. If hypergamy is part of a female's nature, don't you think more people should know what it means? Yes, but that, they're not ready for that talk. Is competition good or bad for society? Good. Why? Because it keeps you at the tip of your toes, top of your game. What are the things men do to compete for women? Dress nice, drive nice things, but people don't understand the psychology of a woman. You do that stuff for yourself, the woman going to find you. So you ain't got to do something to impress a woman. You do something to level yourself up. And that's when the women be like, see you and be like, ah, you know, now it's a competition for real. What are the things women do to compete for men? It's uh, the outfits, the nails. For some reason, the eyelashes, we don't even like that. Y'all gonna be doing the eyelashes. It's, I don't know who told y'all that was cute. Does a woman's hypergamous nature fuel men to compete with each other? Yes, 100%. Is competition good or bad for society? It's terrible, because men will kill someone over a woman. Okay, but doesn't that also encourage men to improve themselves? To a certain extent. So would it be good and bad? Yes. Since most women want the top men, won't that mean they'll have to share them? Well, everybody top is not the same thing. Do you think that women will start marrying down or not at all? He's trying to get out of secrets. Yes, I feel like these days a lot of men, women marry down because a lot of women are in power now over men. Mm -hmm. And we make more money, we're graduating with more degrees and things like that. So I feel like we're stepping up and men are kind of stepping down a little bit. Interesting, okay. Do you think that hypergamy leads to polyamory? Mm. I gotta think about it because it's kind of like, it, it does in a certain way because it seems like everybody is out to get something.
from someone, everybody is trying to advance. It don't matter if you're a male or a woman. People get in relationships to advance in a way. If you was the ugly guy who couldn't get the cute girl, now you grown and you got money, you're going to go after the beautiful woman. If you was the girl who didn't have a lot of money and stuff, you're going to go after the man who can take care of you and get you to the next level that you want to be. Everybody is out for the next thing. Everybody is out for the best thing, and that's for themselves. If most women want to date the top men, won't that mean they have to share them? No. Eventually. If okay, I... no sharing should be ever Well, all happen. I'm saying is as women become more powerful and become higher status, doesn't their dating pool of men to choose from shrink because most women want to date a man on their level or higher? Yeah. Yes. So yeah. once again, isn't it true that women would often rather be the emperor's mistress than the peasant's wife? Yeah. So if a woman wants a loyal man, wouldn't she have to settle for an average man rather than a high value man that every woman wants? I mean, yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, that's what's happening. Yeah. yeah, it is. It's a sad world we live in. <laughs> and you know what? And you know what? You have to date someone that's ugly to be treated right. I'm not, you know what? I don't mean that. I don't mean that. Okay. I don't and, mean and, and, that. And finally, what are, your thoughts on, what are your thoughts on the following statement, okay? A man's loyalty is tested when he has everything, while a woman's loyalty is tested when her man has nothing. I think that's that is exactly so true, true, and we should end it on that. Yeah. Thank you, Vegas. See you soon. <laughs>